Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Um, I know I missed a week. I'm trying to skip these, so I'm gonna do a video once every two weeks instead of every single week. A video. Um, that's just to split up my load a bit because there's a lot going on, and now with the um coronavirus thing also going in, um, there's a lot of changes, and I need to work from home as well so there's a lot of stuff i need to keep track of so that's why i'm deciding to do uh, one video every two weeks from now on or until things start to get a bit better now also because of that i am a bit limited to the contents i can provide to you guys um that's because i'm still waiting for stuff to ship to me and due to the borders being closed they're not really shipping everything in there's a lot of stuff that's going on so while we're on it, um, I'm still going to continue working with Home Assistant and adding as much stuff as I can into Home Assistant and set up automations um, with everything I have at the moment. So with that said, today what we'll do is we're going to take a look at setting up these um, buttons in Home Assistant. So what that'll do is, uh, remember in the last one we set up the final parts of the alarm. Now we still didn't set up any... Um, automations for the alarm so this one i'll go in and set up this button to um, activate and to arm and disarm the alarm itself so with that said let's go in and take a look there we go so as you can see we're back in home assistant everything looks exactly the same as it were previously and um, we still have our arm home and arm away option right here um our alarm panel has been set up so we have everything in here configured correctly the only thing that I need to tell you guys again, um, these controllers are 443, so you have to keep in mind um, they are just single code buttons, meaning that they send one single code for the specific button that you press. Again, this can have an effect on security or how secure your system is because it's very easy cloning a single code button. However, um, a lot of garage doors and everything still uses just one single code and they don't use rolling codes. So if you're buying one of these um, enabled in order to use them with your Tasmoto uh, that we set up, because it is 443, you need to remember that it, is, it needs to be one code in order for you to integrate that into Home Assistant because that specific code is going to um, indicate if the state is on or off for that button. So the first thing we need to do is we need to identify the codes for this button that we have. And I'll have a link for these in the description as well that you can go ahead and buy. So right here, what I'll do is I opened up my Tasmoto console for my son of bridge. So if you guys don't know how to set that up, I do have a video showing you how to set up Tasmoto on your son of bridge and how to add items to your home assistant. The only thing we're going to take a look at is the codes that's being sent when we press the button. So I have A, B, C and D located right on these controllers. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to press A on the button. And as you can see, it shows us the code that was received. So under RF code, it'll give us that specific code. So that's for code A. Then if I press B, it'll send a different code for that B button. Now again, if I press A, it'll gonna, it's going to send the exact same button, but we only need those two codes for A and B. And that is what we'll use in our configuration.yaml file to integrate a button into Home Assistant. So with that said, let's open up our configuration.yaml file and quickly add this in here. The process is fairly sim similar to the uh, previous video, so I'm not going to go into depth. I'll just add in the code and then add it into Home Assistant. And if we scroll down, you can see I have a bunch of stuff that I added in here. That's for um, my uh, PV system that I have up, so I'll not go into that yet. But right here, I already have one that was set up previously, so I'm just going to copy this one in here let's just undo that so i'll just copy this code right here and i'll leave this code down in the description below as well so all i'm doing is i'm going to paste this in here and then just update these codes so remember i have two codes so i'm going to use one of them for arm and then one of them for disarm now you can set this up different ways but i prefer using a separate button for each of these states so we have a on and a off state so on here, we need to change the actual name of button. Um, I can, I'm just going to call it button one for this video so it doesn't conflict with that one. 
then in our payload on we'll copy the first key that I pressed which is the A so we can add this right in here and then for code B was the second code that we sent I'll just copy that code and add it under the off option and paste it in right there that's it device glass is locked that's just going to be for the icon that it's going to display we're not really going to use that or show that on our dashboard i may show it just to show that it is working but in reality you're going to set up automations and you don't really need to know the state of the button um, because you're going to use that within um, home assistant as an automation and not really an item that you can um, make use of so once we have everything in here, we need to go in and save that and then restart our Home Assistant. So let's quickly go in and restart Home Assistant. There we go, guys. So once Home Assistant has restarted, um, you should be good to go. Um, the way we can test to see if this button is added and if it is working, you can view it in the developer tools or I'm just going to edit this right here and it should allow me to add the button to as a entity. Let's just use a glance. Um, we just need basic information listed here, right here. So all I'll do is I'll just click the button one and hit save and that's going to add it in right here and as you can see button one shows the status of locked i can click on it um so if i click on the one right here as you can see i pressed a and it showed up as unlocked then again if i press the b it shows that it has been locked so that's pretty straightforward and fairly simple to use um the next thing we can do is we need to set up our automations so we don't really need this thing to be displayed on here because there's not really anything we're going to do with it um, uh, it's just a button showing the state uh, we don't need to have the state because we already have the alarm system that will configure automations with that'll show up the that'll change the status of the alarm according to the status of the button so a is for unlocked and b is for locked so that's all we need to know and then the next step is to set up our automation. So you can set us up in two ways. Um, you can do it in Node-RED or in Home Assistant itself. For this one, I'm going to use Home Assistant itself to set up those automations. So all we'll do is we'll click on the configuration down here and then click on our automations. Then click on the plus sign right here. I'm going to skip this. And then in the new automation, we can just say arm home so once we added in the name we need to go in and select the trigger remember that's a state change so we need to select the state so and then the entity and that's going to be the button one and then for a we have a and b now you can change this uh, swap it around if you need to mine currently shows as unlocked when i press a um, and then locked when i press b but i'm going to say if the state changed from on and off remember we have it listed as on and off it just shows us locked and unlocked because we chose the value for lock but that won't make make a difference on the actual on or off payload so if we say it changes from on to off that'll be the trigger so as soon as it goes from on to off we can add an additional condition we're not going to do it that what we'll do is we'll select the action for a service so remember we select call service and then the specific service we're going to call is going to be alarm panel uh, arm away so we need to arm the house okay so once we have selected arm away which means as soon as i press the button it'll arm the house to away we don't need any service data in here yet um, that's only going to be applicable when we want to disarm it. Remember in our configuration we said we don't need any code to arm the alarm, but we do need to enter a code when we disarm it. And that will be for the next automation. So for this one, that's all we need is the name of the um, automation, which is just arm home. Then the entity, which is the button that we added when it goes from on to off. Or you can reverse it as well. It's not going to make a big effect. Um, you can say from off to on. Um, it's just it's just going to swap. 
it's just going to swap over the button order on your remote so from on to off and then it's going to call a service and then for the alarm panel arm away and then we select the alarm and in the service state so we leave as is and hit the save button and that is now active now we need to add a additional one uh, additional automation which will be disarming the home so if we add another one i'm going to skip and we say disarm home exact same options in here um, so it is on device state select the entity which is button one and then we just swap this one over so then it's going to be from off to on so as soon as it goes from off to on we're disarming the home now i know this sounds a bit weird um, but you can swap this over so in the device um, we need to call a service so we click right here and then select the alarm panel disarm right here and that's the disarm option and we need to select our house alarm panel that's the entities that it needs to disarm and then in the service data we need to add in our pin code for our configuration so right here i already have it listed it's just you literally just type in code and then the code for your alarm system or the code that you've specified in the configuration in our in the last video and that's it so now if we hit save there we go so that's in there and now um, as you can see they are active i still have the same one right here so now if i press one of the buttons in here um and change the state right here it's going to show unlocked which is a meaning that it is disarmed and then if i press b as you can see it just started arming d um, so as you can see it shows pending that's because it needs to give us time to get out of the house but because we're using the button it's not really necessary but sometimes you may want to use the code and that's why it has the pending option so we'll wait for that to arm and then once we, it is on there we go we can press the disarm button which is going to be the a button right here on my remote and as you can see it un, it disarmed the alarm and it shows the button is also unlocked um, all the way to the bottom and that's it for setting up a button now you have four buttons on here so you can configure it for a lot of different items like silence alarm or a panic button um, it just depends on the way you would like to set it up you can also just go in and configure this button to activate anything else in your house um, so remember it's just a state change so as soon as this thing changes state you can have that trigger your lights or set the lights to a specific color or make your media start start to play um, or make your media player uh, start to play songs or skip specific songs so you can set up a lot of options just with this button these buttons that you have in here so it's a fairly universal button and that's why i said it may not be that secure um, for using for arming and disarming your home but that's what i'll be using to arm and disarm my alarm and that's going to be it for this one guys i hope there was some information in here as i've said um, i know there's still a lot of automations that we need to set up in home assistant but for now that's all i have um, i still want to set up a actual speaker that, that shouts at us or uh, trigger it um, it's just basically going to be a relay that opens up an alarm um, or a tweeter basically that shouts at us um, we'll set that up as well in upcoming videos but for now it's just going to be a simple automation um, arming and disarming your house with a small button that you can add to your keychain which is fairly convenient um, if you guys do have any questions you can go in and ask down below and you, i hope you have a fantastic rest of your day